So, um, my, you know, my background, I'm not a fourth builder like Dr. Ting and, and Brad and all most of the rest of the group are. I'm, I'm more of an, uh, a user and application guy. I've developed a lot of products with fourth. So that's, that's going to be my focus is, is teaching people to use fourth uh, for developing products. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to keep it a very generic uh, when I do the talk, so Brad will have us a, a section where he's talking about the the new features and the new words he has working, and that's ESP32 specific. So he will always present. Um, I will present this this class. We'll probably switch around though. I'll I'll do the first one, and then he'll do the the second one um, with the hardware specific uh, words. You know why would you even want to use for it you know i mean everything's in c you go on you go online and you can get all this c code so why would you even use for it i am i'm a professional um c coder more embedded c i don't do c plus plus but um i use a lot of a lot of c at work why would you use for it interactive debugging can't do that in c you have to in c you have to you know build scaffolding you have to build code to test your, um, you know, your hardware, and then you have to compile it, and then you have to download the binary, you know, JTAG, the processor, download it, it's all takes time. Um, you can use a source level debugger, uh, obviously with C, they, they have watch lists and stuff like that, but fourth is really nice for interactive debugging, which we'll see later. Um, you know, you can quickly make uh, test words as you debug. It's basically instantaneous compilation. You know, just say colon, space, new word, a series of words, um, end colon, and a semicolon, and enter, and you immediately compile your new little test word that, you know, because you many times you these are throwaway words. You don't need to save them or use them. You could put them in, um, in Notepad or something if you want to keep them and copy and paste, paste it right into fourth. Incremental compilation. <clears throat> it's a huge benefit when you're developing hardware. Uh, at work, at Made in Space, um, we do a lot of FPJ work. It takes 60 minutes <laughs> to uh, synthesize a new FPJ. After you change one line of code, you know, it can take 20 to 60 minutes to compile and, and download it into say an FPJ. Um, the incremental compilation means it's instantaneous compilation. Um, you use a lot less memory than compiled C. Uh, I have in the past, uh, like I, I wrote an image, an imaging system, and it came with C. The imaging system had um, partitioned the uh, the image memory, so you, it would digitize a video as a di digitizing card. And it um, it created it had quadrants basically the upper left, the upper right every everything was a 64k window. This is back in you know the uh, 1990 time frame, but it had uh, basically banks at four banks of memory, and the C whoever wrote the C code was would write a line of video on on say quadrant one and then switch quadrants a lot and put the rest of the line in quadrant two and kept switching back and forth, which was silly. Um, and it took forever for it to paint a picture. Whereas what we did was we used like a, um, a block move command, you know, like C move. And we moved the whole 64 K block from Ram into the video memory. Uh, so you can, and we had enough room left over because our application only took 62 K of, code on an IBM PC, um, we had two full images in RAM at all times. And uh, this is a doctor um, uh, x-ray kind of application. So <clears throat> you wind up with uh, a lot more memory for your application when you use fourth. Fourth also is is essentially your OS. You don't need an OS with fourth. You don't need to put embedded Linux or you don't need to put an RTOS uh, in your system. 
you know, fourth is is your app your development environment it's your compiler it's your you know it's your debugger and it can also manage uh, di the disk you talk to it using a simple terminal program uh, i typically use real term but you can use any of the the free um terminal programs because you just use a you're just talking to it over rs232 and of course on the esb32 uh brad's implemented the, a wi-fi web browser and bluetooth could be coming later and it takes a simple usb cable now this is uh this is a quote from uh, thinking forth i have um references at the end of my presentation so so everyone can go um, look at the PDF versions of Starting Forth and Thinking Forth. And this is what Leo Brody said about Forth. <clears throat> the words you add to Forth become extensions to the Forth language. Forth is always available. Your application inherits Forth's features, which means incremental compilation, interactive, you know, can interactively talk to uh, your application, your application words. Create words using in the English language. Big fan of that. Don't use computerese, use English. Um, think of it like you're talking in the future. You want to talk to your application. You want to talk to your computer using voice. You want to have someone who's not a programmer do it. So try to use English language uh, when you're choosing your words. Don't be cryptic or use computerese. By using English to create your words, automatic speech recognition is capable. Easy to interface, serial RS-232, most ports support USB. Um, fourth versus C. C must, must compile, compile the entire application after a small change in source code. Then you must JTAG the processor with the entire bit file. You must create C functions for code hardware testing, increasing your code size. You need a fast laptop or other computer for editing source and compiling. C compilers, you know, want they're doing a lot of stuff, and so they need a pretty powerful computer. <clears throat> um, you may need an operating system like Linux or um, or Windows. These are some projects that I've done. Uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, I did a teleradiology system for um, doctors who can remotely. We did we used a camera system and a light box, and we digitized X-rays, sent them over. Um, the phone lines at 19.2, which is pretty slow. This is before the internet was actually available. Um, Whiskers the Intelligent Robot was another product um, that I developed. And I developed a three-level artificial intelligence uh, operating system uh, in fourth. So I've, I've done a, quite a few different things. These are some of the robots that I've done. I'm not going to go into great de detail on that, but I did build the first men packable uh, robot for the U.S. military before iRobot and PackBot came out. This is an early company that I had in the 1990s uh, called Angelus Research, and that's where we designed all these robots. I was using the uh, 68AC11 new micros uh, um, for the chips in all of my boards. I created this three level um, intelligent operating system. I'm not gonna go into much detail there. So the, where I see the future of fourth, <clears throat> intelligent robotics. If you have an intelligent machine, do you have to recompile? Every time it learns something new, do you wanna recompile <laughs> the whole application? We, you know, you need, to, you need incremental learning. You need inc incremental compilation. Um, yes, you can you can write AI new languages in C, you know, like small talk and some of these new deep learning things and um, neural networks and stuff like that. But fourth is a very good foundation for AI. Intelligent space systems. I work at Made in Space as a senior uh, electrical engineer and think about 100 robots working far out in space, let's say on Pluto, and you have this really low speed comm link, you got a hundred robots out there, you need to update their code and you have a low speed data link. Are you gonna update 
you're going to send up these huge binary blobs over your low speed data link and update 100 robots in space. Whereas with fourth, all you would do is you you would your main app your main applications you would have say deferred words. I'll get into that later, but you could just up, update the code that you need to have changed. You don't need to, <clears throat> you don't need to update the whole um, you know the whole system. So, um, and like I said, AI, I really think the uh, fourth has got um, a very bright future in AI. Some of us need to work on this and, and develop applications so somebody can, people can see that incremental compilation and, um, and some of the other features of fourth is really perfect for AI. So I talked about AI robots in space problems with that. Um, at work, we're using um, a RISC-V and um, then we have an FPGA in Fabric. And I thought fourth would be a great command processor on top of, you know, obviously we have a lot of C programmers, so they got to keep the C in the loop here. But fourth would make a great com command processor for space systems. All right, got to get back to my. <clears throat> um, I designed a um, an ESP thirty two based robot board that, as as we learn more about the ESP um, thirty two programming, um, there will be a board out there for intelligent robotics uh, based on the same, um, you know, based on the same system that Brad and Dr. Ting and I are working on. So obviously these, these things are really cheap. You can buy two of them for 14 bucks. So thinking forth, force uh, methodology becomes clear. Fourth programming consists of extending the root language, which is fourth, toward the application, providing new commands that can be used to describe the problem at hand. When you're programming with fourth, think in terms of you're creating a new language to describe your application. The stack. <laughs> yeah, somebody's got their uh, microphone on. The stack. The reason we have a stack and forth is it supports inter the interpretive environment. If the interpreter finds a word in the dictionary, it executes it. If the interpreter encodes it as a number, it puts it on the stack. If it is neither a number or defined word, it'll come back with a question mark and tell you that it's not defined. Also, if you write a piece of code in forth, and you call, you misspell a word, fourth blasts out of execution and goes back into the interpretive mode and says, uh, you know, it's not defined. So, um, so actually it won't even compile, it won't even compile. So that's another nice thing about, uh, about fourth is if you make them, if you make mistakes like that, it blows, it blows up and, and goes back interpretive and says, you know, hey, <laughs> you screwed up. So here's some of the stack words. <clears throat> um, so dot s on the left hand side, I have a paren uh, n n to n n paren. So the parentheses is a way to describe what's going on with the stack and forth in your code. So forth will ignore that if you embed that embed that in your code. What I mean by n to n, I don't know. Dot S doesn't care how many items are on the stack. If you have one, it'll show one item. If you have, if you have three or four, it'll show all those items. It is non-destructive um, and it displays the current values. So the simple period 
takes one number off the top of the stack and displays it to the terminal. So this is dis destructive. It will consume that number that's on the stack. O cara chamou ele para morar. Porque ele perdeu casa, perdeu tudo. Então chamou para morar. Só que só tem um quarto e o quarto já é já tem esse rapaz. Can somebody turn their microphone off? <laughs> that's speaking Spanish. <laughs> Okay, the next word is called drop, right? Now drop will drop the, the top item on the stack and um, dispose of it, and then everything else shifts up. Uh, swap huh? will swap the first item and the Não, second. Só tem ele e o outro. No quarto. É esse preto aí, mamãe. It's French? Oh, my, I think there's a uh, somebody from France has got their microphone on. Um, o pai alugou, alugou o quarto dele. Aí quando ele saiu, o motor copies the second item on the stack um, to the top, the top of the stack and pushes the other items down. Rote will rotate the third item from the um, top of the stack and push the other items. So here's a here's kind of stack basics. So I have three things on the stack. I got item number one, which is the top of the stack, which I have 10. The second item on the stack is I have is 20, and the third item is 30. So I got a screenshot of G4th down here where I just typed in 30 enter, 20 enter, 10 enter. And I did a dot S, and you can see it displays those three things on the stack and says OK. Um, this is an example of adding two numbers. So we use this is reverse Polish notation, is what uh, fourth does. And you put the numbers on the stack, you just type in the numbers. And then you then you do you execute whatever the command is like plus minus um, multiply or divide, and uh, so you always put the the action comes after you the data is stored in the stack. So here I I say ten twenty space ten plus dot, and you can see I, I did this interactively. You can't do this in C. And it um, it added two numbers interactively, and displayed 30 using the dot command, and then um, said OK. Okay, add two numbers and divide by three. So here's an example of adding two numbers and dividing by three. You notice we put the 20 and the 10 on first, right? So we type 20 space, 10 space plus, and then three, and then divide it. And then dot will display the answer. So that's 10. So you can actually use fourth interactively. Maybe um, fourth understands hex and decimal. And, um, um, de maluco that, pegou ele e matou alguém mandou. Anyway, so <clears throat> you can interactively um, use fourth as a little calculator as your. Um, while you're debugging hardware, which is really nice. So it's equivalent to X equals print 20 plus 10, you know, divided by three. So that's the way you do it in another language. Uh, that's postfix notation. The interpreter. <clears throat> so you have, you have this great interpreter. You can type in commands, you can type in your words and execute them. So dot quote, um, now this you can only do inside of a, a colon definition, but dot quotes, and you have to put a space there. Fourth uses spaces and carriage returns to parse the words. So um, you want to have space in between there. And that will just display a text string. So maybe you wanted to you, um, create a word that does something and you want to show the result or you want to um, maybe during execution of one of your words, you want for debugging purposes, you might say, you know, I'm executing this word right now. So you just use dot quote for that. Another um, 
interpreter word is uh, emit. So whatever number you have, so let's just say uh, 65 is uh, A, ASCII A on the, um, the ASCII table. So if you say 65 space emit, it'll, it'll display an A on the screen. So emit is another good one to use for debugging. Um, key, what key does <clears throat> is you type, you type in key enter and you'll see that this, the terminal stock locks up basically. And the very next key that you press on your keyboard will be captured by key and put it on the stack. So this is a way, you know, you may want to pause when you're debugging code. Um, you might want to put a key statement in there in critical code and um, it'll stop and, and pause, you know, at that execution point. And then um, you, maybe you're displaying some of the values and that sort of thing uh, on the screen and you can look at the values and when you're okay with them, you just, you can uh, press enter and then keep processing. So key is a very nice word for um, debugging, but you can also, you know, do your own, create your own interpret, interpreter if you want it, interpreter type words. So I included the ASCII table um, just for fun. So people can sit there interactively and play around with the table. You can see um, this is actual co code that I captured. Uh, I use G4 for my uh, testing. G4 is pretty generic fourth. Um, so it should work on any fourth. So you can sit there and you can type in 65 is, if you look it up on the table here, where 65 is, and it says, it says hex 41, octals 101, and it, it's an A. So with fourth, you're just interactive. You type in 65 space emit, and you press enter and it'll display an A. 66 is a B, 67 is a C. So you see in the, the top, uh, right, how we're um, we're doing that with, and now this is with decimal. You can also tell forth to interpret numbers in different uh, uh, radix. So I typed in hex. Now 41, if you go look at the table, decimal 60, uh, 65, but in hex is 41. And you notice I said 41 emit after saying hex, and now it's the same A. Um, and Brad's going to put binary in there for me because I like binary. <laughs> it's binary is great for um, think in terms of you're debugging an 8 bit port on the microprocessor and you want, you know, 11101111. So you would type in, you can type interactively in fourth binary, and then you can put in the, the ones and zeros. And you're trying to toggle certain lines together, and then you can say say port A C store enter, and now you've toggled those lines interactively. If you were if you were doing this in C, you'd have to write code, download it, you know, compile it, download it, execute it, and it's just so much simpler uh, debugging hardware in fourth. It, fourth is is really amazing for debugging hardware. So memory variables and constants. Uh, variable. Now, when I put a, um, I put I, I, where it says name there, and I put the uh, the left arrow and the right arrow. That means that you're you're going to type in something in, interactively. You're going to replace that with a word. So variable space uh, my var, for example, and you press enter, and now you've created a variable in fourth that you can store and fetch data from. Um, this defines a, def, defines a name variable, allocates. Um, so the allocation, um, it, depend, it could depend on your fourth system and maybe Brad can jump in and, and tell us about variable and E fourth. Is it 32-bit um, or 16-bit? 32-bit. Uh, okay. uh, the, sorry, so it depends. Actually, I should say it depends. It, uh, the the flavor that the the the, um, the micro e fourth that I that I've just put up that one's thirty two bit. Um, Dr. Ting's the uh, oh actually sorry no it's thirty two on both. I'm sorry. 
early morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so if you're using an old fourth board, um, you know, um, most of the fourths, you know, were designed to be 16 bit. And, uh, but there's some 8 bit stuff out there too. So, variable, uh, you might want to check if on our ESP 32s, you can fit data as large as 32 bits into a variable but if you're using some other fourth you might want to you know check that uh, check the user's manual um create does is the most powerful words in fourth i'm not going to get into that right now but you can use um create to create a name and and when a name is created it re the name returns an address and memory it does not allow allocate any memory space though so you got to make sure if you use create you have to you must use a lot a lot so a lot takes a number so you might say create uh my array uh 100 a lot and so that'll give you 100 um uh 100 cells in in that array and Brad, jump in one more time and tell me about a lot. Is that 32 bit? Uh, those are in bytes usually, but I mean, it, you need to, you can, we have cell, the word cells. So you could do like, you know, a lot. You know 10 cells a lot to, to allocate. Uh, 32 bit. Yeah. Okay. So but, if we don't. A lot is by default bytes. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, a lot is in bytes by default because you might want to a lot strings or other other chunk buffers and things like that okay yeah actually um i have an example of using cells here at the next slide um another another important um uh name is constant and so basically you put a number in the stack let's just say it's a hundred space constant and my array size so now what you you done when you whenever you say my, my array size it's going to put the number 100 on the stack for the next word to um to consume so that's how we do constants in uh fourth um storing and accessing uh, memory so we have um two store or two exclam exclamation point when you see exclamation point in fourth think store you're storing something you're storing a number in memory so it requires a number on the stack which is going to be the second position and the address so the top of stack will be the address so if you if i typed in 10 um f f f you know f f f f for example uh to store it would store uh the number at that address and that's a 32 bit. Um, we also, if we use the exclamation point by itself, that's a 16 bit. And C store, that means a character store, C, uh, will store an 8 bit value. And we also, we can fetch data um, that's stored in variables and in, in memory by using the at sign. We, we call the at sign fetch in fourth. So to fetch fetches a 32 bit value, fetch fetches a 16 bit value, and C fetch um, fetches an 8 bit value. So here's some examples here. So I created <clears throat> this is actual code that you can copy and paste into a fourth uh, variable space var one and you know 10 space var one store. So I'm storing 10 there. It's below, um, you know, a 16-bit value, so if that works. If it was above 16-bit and you use store, then, you know, it's going to truncate. So don't do that. <laughs> um, so variable var2, 20 store. And so I wrote a little word. So this is how we create our words in fourth. Colon, space, init bars is the word that I chose. I have um, a, a stack picture. We call that a stack picture. So print, you must have a space. And then you, you can put down 
you know, whether it's a number or address or whatever, and you can, uh, on the left-hand side of the double dash, on the right-hand side, you would put the new stack picture. In this case, um, there's not, it's not, this word doesn't consume or return any, um, any numbers. So it's basically blank. So it's gonna take these three variables and put a 10, 20, and 30 um, in each of these variables. So now I'm gonna write some words. <clears throat> um, so the first word is copy var one to var two, and it's just gonna simply copy it, copy var two to var one. And so it's, it's doing a, a var two fetch in var one store. Um, swap, um, don't confuse that with the, the word swap and forth. I'm just saying conceptually, I'm swapping these two var values. I'm swapping, um, I'm taking out of this one and putting into this one. Um, you can name things, anything you want. You can actually rename fourth words. Don't do that. <laughs> you can rename numbers in fourth, which is mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is kind of an example of, okay, um, I'm writing some code here, right? This is, this is um, the variables I'm gonna use. I, I create an initialization word for the, for the different variables. Then I create some manipulation type words that access the data and do stuff with it. And then during debugging, I wanna be able to look at this stuff. So this is a great debug word, display vars. I do a CR means carriage return. So uh, the reason I do that is if I didn't, um, this data would start right after here up here when when you're interactive so you put a cr here and then you just put this will display var1 colon on the screen and then it'll give you the actual number and then dot um uh, dot will display it and then carriage return so it's nice and pretty and now this is a nice debugging word for debugging interactively um I always do this. I'm I'm a late. I'm not a very good typer, like most of you guys probably are. So I like I like to create hotkeys and forth. So this is how you do it. It's real simple. So you define your words like this one. We have display vars. So I want to make the D key a hotkey. So I say colon space D space display vars semicolon, and now I can just press the D key and enter, and it executes those words. A lot less typing when you're debugging. Um, whenever you're doing stuff with arrays, I, I highly recommend you use constants for your array sizes and parameters because you don't want to like pass, you know, make a coding mistake where you say, you know, maybe you put in 10 instead of 100 or even worse. What if you put in a thousand? Fourth will, fourth does not um, do any checking to make sure that you screwed up. <laughs> so you can you can touch the thing about fourth is you can touch the machine, you can touch the computer, and if you want to screw it up, <laughs> more power to you. So um, always may use a constant when you're you're setting um, sizes of your data structures, for example. So here's an example where he's variable. I'm defining a um, my variable name is array. And this is what, what Brad was talking about. So array size here, I wanna make sure that it's on a 32-bit micro, it's gonna actually allocate um, four bytes. So it's, this is gonna allocate 400 bytes because the cell size is 32 bits, right? So um, it's divisible by eight. So that means that it's gonna actually allocate 400 bytes of memory or 100 bytes of 32-bit memory and then um, a lot. So <clears throat> I have a word called zero, uh, zero array. So now I say array size, right? I, I defined it up here. This is my constant. And I, I 
I'm not going to make a mistake by typing in 101 or 1,000 or 10. Um, this is why you should always use constants for these kinds, kinds of things. Um, and this is a simple do loop. Um, we're we're going to talk about do loops next time. And, and we will also bring up um, uh, begin again and begin until. I know Dr. Ting loves those words better than do loops. <laughs> but um, there's a lot of do loop code out there. So uh, we need to support it. And Brad is... Um, has implemented do loop in our in ours. So you can use use either one. Uh, the advantage of begin it, uh, again and begin until is it's actually faster. So, but you if you see a lot of fourth code, you see a lot of do loops. So anyway, I believe Dr. Ting actually prefers for next to, to do for next. But, okay, <laughs> which is unfortunately sort of mixed support in various other fourth implementations, but but is as many virtues. Okay. Well, anyway, we'll go. We'll go through that. Uh, whenever we do loops, we'll show you how to do it both ways. Um, oh, Don, may I say one one word about this? Sure. Um, I understood uh, last meeting. Uh, Doctor Ting explained it why he chose for next. I accept. I understand that, but. Uh, everybody's complaining that we don't have do loops. Everybody, this is the, the result. I, I only tell you the result. Yeah, yeah. No, we no. Brad has got a do loop implemented. Okay, so everybody needs to use the um, the the modified version. I, oh, Don, I lost some friends in the last days fighting for for next. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we are the fourth supports do loops. Um, what, it's what did you call it's it, Brad? The way. Yeah, uh, Brad, what, what did you call it, that version? Uh, EU fourth or something like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, my, micro E fourth, uh, I guess is that. Yeah, I'm still fussing with the name, I should probably standardize, but yeah. So, I, I, I also I believe I have a version in one of my branches that will also do that on top of the. The other one but yeah anyways it's 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 trivial to add do loops and i think i think it's yeah i i i understand dr ting's desires there in terms of the performance and i i see the advantage but I, even my head hurts a little with four aft for the, the the syntax to get it to sort of do the right thing is is, is a little um opaque yeah and all all my uh you know i'm gonna make my whiskers source source code uh, open source and they it uses all do loops so to be compatible with with my robot I, I need do loops implemented anyway <laughs> so any anyway, so um yeah so use use the brad's um enhanced version of e fourth in all of our classes and you won't have a problem because we will support do loops um in the class um, but we'll show you how to do it both ways. Uh, so anyway, so what a do loop takes is um, the number of times, which is a ray size. Remember, that's a constant. So what does a, a constant do? It's going to put 100 on, on the stack. So the top of stack is going to say 100 coming into the do loop. It's going to go from 100 to 0. That's what the 0 is before the do. And it's going to say array i plus. So array, remember, is the address. So it's going to add the, iter the iterative value. So it's going to start at 0 and, and go up to 100. It's going to put that on the stack. And then um, the next line is 0. It's going to swap it. And it's going to store it. Ink, <clears throat> ink num array. So basically, I'm here again. Um, I'm using it, this constant array size. So you know, I don't have to remember what it is because I used a constant. Zero do. So array plus uh, i plus um, i swap c store loop. So basically, what it's going to do is it's going to put um, an incremental number throughout the array. From so it's going to start at zero. 
and then at the first cell of the array, and then the second one's going to be two and three and four and five, all the way up to 100. Um, I made another test word display ar array here. So we do a carriage return and then array size and then another do loop. And we actually uh, read the array by using C fetch. And we, we put a, a dot is going to show the number and space is going to put a space between the numbers. So that, that's basically the first um, first course. Uh, this is my contact information, and um, we'll be we'll be teaching you a lot more stuff. But this this gives you something to play with when you get get your board up and running.